It's been getting a lot of um, attention. On next year, we'll be starting on Tuesdays instead of Wednesdays. Since we've been a church, we've always had our midweek small groups on Wednesday night. Um, starting in 2017, the first Tuesday of the year, we will be meeting uh, here at 7 p.m. for corporate prayer led by Elder Anthony. Amen. Can y'all chat? And then directly after that, we'll have our small groups where we continue for the first three months of the year teaching our school of the prophets. Amen. So if you want to learn how to hear from God, if you want to learn to hear and speak or demonstrate what God says, I implore you, encourage you to get here. We will have a big graduation service for our school of the prophets the last weekend in March of 2017. So I really encourage you all to come out, be a part of it. Our School of the Prophets is free. We just take up a donation or offering after our teaching, but it's no registration uh, for that. But the last weekend in March, there will be a registered event. Amen. So I ask everybody to come out and be a blessing. Once you found your place in Scripture, say amen. amen. If you're still looking for it, say hold on. Good stuff. Isaiah 9 and 6. For to us a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government, somebody say government. government. And the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. I'm going to read it again. For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulder, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. We've been in a teaching series this month dealing with the subject title of Ready. Say Ready. Ready. All right. And we've been dealing with the art of preparation, the art of preparation. And uh, in this time of year, we always consider the nativity, and uh, we consider the wise men, the different symbolic things of Jesus' arrival into the earth. But I want to come from a different perspective this morning, very briefly, and I want to teach from the perspective of preparation. Since that's been our teaching series of the month, uh, God shared upon my heart a couple of things that we need to you know, kind of benchmark into them as we prepare ourselves to close out this year and open up a new year. Now, it's uh, known in all of the Gospels that when God approached the earth, to announce the arrival of Jesus. He met shepherds in the field. Shepherds in the field. It's significant that you understand that he didn't show up at church. He didn't show up at praise team rehearsal. It was not an email sent out. It was not a text. But he approached people working. Men that had a heart for shepherding. Men that were unifying sheep. Men who had a position uh, in the field, and I truly believe in the same token, we're going to see in 2017 uh, anointing of grace, uh, uh, a position that God's going to take for unifiers. We're going to see a great position that God's going to take for unifiers, because in this day and time, we see so much divide in the political realm, we see divide in our money, we see... Uh, a divide in our health, a divide in opportunities and possibilities, but there'll be a great grace that God will give to those who have a heart to bring people together, white people and black people, and the people that's on Capitol Hill, the people that's living under bridges, there'll be a grace and an anointing for people that can have the heart to bring people together. The shepherds that God met in the field were not likely candidates to hear a prophetic word about destiny, about future, about the orchestration of future events as pertains to me, you, and everybody that's here this morning. These were men of God who had assignment to gather sheep. And sheep were domesticated, uh, docile animals submitted to their shepherd. Not hard to shop, uh, not hard to bring into a flock, not hard to gather, but they were usually uh, gathered by a staff or a sheep dog. And uh, I think the heart of God, as it was silent, for God uh, over through Malachi to Matthew, I think the heart of God was to reach people who had a heart to labor despite acknowledgement. Now we see in this day of time people who like pats on the backs of gratitude and 
people who do things leveraging their support for certificates and uh, different type of uh, attire and different type of acknowledgments. But I truly believe that God is doing something in the heart of people that you're going to begin to labor without a paycheck. Now, when I say that, that might be alarming to you, but God says you have to know them that labor among you. So for some of y'all in 2016, it's been an eye-opening experience that God has showed you the heart of the people that you've been working with or laboring up under, and you're going to have to make some tough decisions. Because in order for you to bring in, inherit, or gather what God has for you in this coming year, you might have to find yourself separated out in the field. Yeah. You might have to find yourself to walk away yeah. from the community surround us. It'll be easy to preach a word that says God came to the synagogue, or God came to the church, or God came to the people of God. Where were the prophets during this time? Where, where were the apostles? Where were the pastors? Where were the leaders? Where, where were the likely candidates that God would touch? And it's a true fact that during the season, God had not spoke to anybody. He had shut down heaven. He had took a long-term lunch break. He didn't send no word. The word of God was rare. There was no prophetic utterance of anything like that. And he had the audacity to show up in a field one night. Not, not Sunday morning, but one night and begin to position the leverage of the uh, Eternity to shepherds, to shepherds, people who were uh, significantly uh, in, uh, important. I mean, I'm sorry, they, they were uh, sensitive to gathering uh, things that were not as important to other people. And when I say not as important to other people, I mean the sheep, the things that uh, you know, people just kind of walk past, the things that people just looked over, the things that were, were significant to people. And I think that's what we're going to see in this coming year, how God uses people to gather things that are not significant to others. We see, uh, even I talked about this a couple weeks ago, where uh, in Monroe Park, where they shut down the, uh, the park to build up something, and all of the homeless people were scattered, they were uh, sent to mist, and then we saw this one opportunity opportunity with this young lady who I'm partnering with in 2017. She had RVA peace gathering. And this peace gathering was a response to Donald Trump being in office and some of the things that were going on in the city. And she began to get uh, acknowledgments from D.C., from Capitol Hill, from downtown Richmond, because she had a heart to bring people together to hear a perspective not of hate, not of division, but of unity. And I truly believe that when we leverage that same type of attention and that same type of focus, that God will be in the bless our efforts and increase the works of our hands. Scripture tells us that the government was upon his shoulder. The government was upon his shoulder. And we know Jesus was not born on December 25th. We also know that this time of year was not the time of year where he was born into the earth. But one thing that cannot be denied, that God was preparing us not just for a savior, but he was preparing us for a kingdom to now touch the earth. This was not just a person that we were waiting on, but this was a government, a kingdom, a society that was absent in the earth. And because the society was absent in the earth, we had wickedness, we had sin, we had a number of different things that caused men and women to be separate from God. So God being God says, I want my son home. I want my daughter home. So what I need to do is not just send a man, but I need to send a lifestyle. I need to send a mindset. I need to and an understanding that will cause them to respond to heaven appropriately that despite their money be funny despite them losing jobs despite them losing cars they'll have a kingdom I need their mentality to change. Even some of us now, we are looking at things the wrong way. And when we begin to take on a kingdom mindset, we begin to say, you know what, God, it's not about stuff. It's not about presence. It's not about bowls and cars and different things like that. It's about the government being upon my shoulder. That the warfare is over your mind. The warfare is over your thoughts. The warfare is over your perspective. And when you begin to pledge your allegiance to a mindset that's bigger than yours, you realize that you're not even dealing with stuff that you should even be crying about or even praying about. This is stuff that's attached to your anointing. If you knew what was on the other side of your praise, your worship, your adoration unto God, you wouldn't be praying against some of the things that you're praying against, but you would accept them as battle scars. You would accept them to mature you. You would accept them as things needed for you to
to go to the next level. The government being upon your shoulder, meaning that it makes no difference who sits in the White House because there's something that's sitting on your heart. There's something that's sitting on your mind that gives you a perspective, that gives you an understanding, that gives you a wisdom to be able to force feed. Watch this governmental system. They don't come into alignment with your God. There's a leverage in the language that God's going to give you in this coming hour that you'll be able to respond to the wickedness in this earth yeah. and the wickedness in this world differently. I'm not talking about you just sitting there and picking it and rioting and marching. I'm talking about you being able to go into your prayer closet and come out with authority. Hey. Go into your prayer closet and come out with power. The yeah. enemy has been coming against your mind, coming against your logic, making you want to throw in the towel, making you feel like this is more than what you can bear. But I come to remind you today that God is not looking at how much you can carry or how much you can From heaven to earth was that from a perspective of giving. It says, for to us a child is born, and to us a son is given. Now, throughout the Old Testament, we hear promises of somebody to come. Promises of a Savior and a Messiah. And it's one thing for me to give my child a promise of what I'm going to do. But it's another thing for me to get that same promise and then bring that promise into fruition. God is not a God that's going to promise anything to you and not bring it to pass. My kids didn't wake up at your house looking for Christmas gifts. But they wake up and they woke up in their own house looking for gifts this morning. They knew that their father, their mother labored and went out and put those gifts under the tree and wrapped those gifts. They're not coming knocking at your door because the promise wasn't given from you. They're not coming looking at the neighbor's door because the promise wasn't given from them. Because the promise came from a supervisual figure in their life, a parent in their life, a father in their life. They came to their father and said, okay, I am now looking for my gift. When they woke up this morning, they ran in the room and said, is it time? So is it time? I don't, I don't know about you. I don't know what you've been waiting for. I don't know what you've been preparing for. I don't know what you've been looking for. I don't know what you've been all week long. Uh, my demand to heaven this morning is it time? Yes. You know, God, I've been laboring and I've been suffering and I've been praying and I've been asking and I've been trying to hold this thing together, Thank but every you. ounce of me has been preparing for something bigger than what I can see. So my word this morning, I don't want it to show up in my driveway. I don't want to show up in the bank account. God, I need to know, is it time? Yes. See, your time might be different than my time, and the definition of what you're waiting for might be different than mine. I'm not waiting for people to respond. I'm not waiting for money to respond. But my now time is leveraged off of heaven, kissing the earth. This is a Kairos moment where everything that was once denied and turned over to the enemy shall be restored back into your life. If you understand timing, the fight has not been over stuff, but the fight has been over timing. Him giving your life back. Him giving you the game. Back, him giving you the months back. Yeah. He said, I will restore unto you the years that the caterer and the parlor have eaten away from you. Some of you think that it's too late, you think that you're too old, you think that you're running out of time. We ain't got but a week left in 2016. God said, I'll do in a week what didn't happen in 11 months. I'll allow it to happen in one day, and what didn't hey. happen in three years. So, when they came into my room this morning and said, is it time? My wife looked over and said, honey, the children are ready. And me being half asleep, with a broken voice and all frog in my throat, I'm like, man, it be Christmas, y'all. Because all of the proper things have now been brought into order. All of the things that need to be in place have now been put in place. Now, if they would have asked me that two hours prior, I would have said, no, it's not time. It's, you're asking too early for certain things. You, you can't even have it right like that. It's not time for the Father to give unto you the thing that you've been asking for. Oh my God. But they came at the appropriate time to ask for the thing that has been prepared. Now, see, just like a son or daughter, just like you yourself, it's been time that you've been asked for stuff before, you know, your time, and you've been like, can I have this, and I can I have this, and 
is it time for this? And you know, is it time for that? And as a, as a parent that's safeguarding certain things from you, it's like, no, it's not time for that. Probably for the last month, what you get me for Christmas? What you get me for Christmas? What, what you get me for? I know you have the gifts. I know where y'all put it at. I know it's going to be in the car. I know it's going to be in the closet. And we're trying to act like, you know, we don't know. You know, hey, no, don't worry about that. You know, we're trying to push them off to its appropriate time. But anticipation will rise up in any child looking for that thing that the Father has promised. Hey! Just give me a car, just give me some shoes, just give me this. Look, don't worry about that. It's not the appropriate time. You just need to wait for that thing to be able to manifest or come into fruition. Because I need to safeguard not just it, but I need to safeguard you. Because if I give it to you too soon, what will happen is you will mess up the thing that I'm preparing for you. The Bible says that I'm going to prepare a place for you. And because I'm going to prepare a place for you, guess what? I don't want you to jack it up because of your immaturity. So some of the delay and denial in your life has not been because God don't have that thing ready for you. You can't mature to the place to be able to receive. In due season, you will reap if you faint not. You don't have to stop asking. Keep on asking. The Father's got plenty of answers. But it's only until you come into a level of maturity that your asking meets his demand. Your asking meets what he's given and he'll release unto you the thing that's got your name on it. Theirs. One of my kids got a cell phone. 
He began to open it up. He's beginning to open it up. He says, I got a cell phone. I got a cell phone, man. He said, I can make phone calls, huh? <laughs> do this and I can do that. <clears throat> Look through there. And what he didn't know was that my wife and I, 3 a.m., was tired. We snuck this down, down the steps. Well, we'd been out shopping for two days, something I don't like to do. We had to do that. And, 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 and we took a selfie. And we put it in his phone. <laughs> so that the first thing that he could see. Hey! Yes! Yes! When he opened up his gift, was his phone. Yes! Hallelujah! So you reminded Woo. that a gift given from the Father. We're sharing the same image of the Father. Yes. He said, who did this? I see y'all took a picture in my phone. I, I want that picture to be a reminder that no weapon form that gets you shall be able to prosper. And when you don't feel it, when it seems like it don't happen, you can remember that your father time stamped his image on the gift. When you remember that your father has time stamped the image on your gift, every time you look at it, you'll see your father. Failure. No, 2016 wasn't a failure. 2016 was God 
was giving you a dress rehearsal of what was to come. He was showing you how to handle that thing before you walked in it. He was showing you how to use this. And if you've been faithful with a few things, if you've been faithful with a dog here, look at this. I said, if you've been faithful with a few things, he had to take you from the back seat to the driver's seat. He said, we have to buckle your seatbelt. You're about to pick up your pace. You're about to have your car. when he wasn't in control. Didn't have to tell him how to move his feet. He paid attention when he was restricted. What you do during your restriction, your seasons are without. Your seasons in between seasons. I know we like to come out and go in, but sometimes you go through those seasons in between seasons. I call it the hallway of your destiny. What do you do before you go all the way in, but you all the way out? That's when you pay close attention to the Father. Because as soon as he closed the door on that thing, he knew exactly what to do. He put his, oh my God, he said, I said he put his feet to the pavement. He ain't had to ask no questions. He ain't had to consider nothing. He began to work. He began to labor. And he felt such a confidence that he was able to tell that thing that was once in the driver's seat. Bye-bye. I don't know about you today, but even before we get to watch night service, even before we go through the countdown, it ain't got to be 1159 or 1231. I double dog dare you today to tell all your pain in 2016. Bye-bye. All your failures in 2016, bye bye. I need some time to get my parents straight. I need some time to get my mind right. I need some time to get my heart right. And I ain't gonna waste time soaking over you and crying over you and being angry. I need this week right here to serve as a catapult into my new year. I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful. Because through it all, all of my children were blessed. They were just blessed beyond measure. They were blessed beyond measure. I looked at my daughters. And my wife, I said, wife. I said, wife. Mercy, I said, wife. That wife, they got me. She said, these girls, they, they need this doll. Now, me being a worst. Maybe settle for that. He said, I want to give them this doll baby house. We go to the store. Usually my wife is my outmanner to herself. I said, I don't think they have it. Maybe we can settle for this. Oh, there it is right there. So we go down the aisle and look at another one. She gets the sales associate, brings them out. Ma'am, this one is already gone. She said, well, can you sell me this one? Can't sell you the one off the shelf, ma'am. It's just a display. Okay, no problem. So we went back, picked it up, brought it home. This morning, my kids opened up, my daughters opened up their, their dollhouse. And as they're looking at the dollhouse, I can see them getting so excited and so grateful. They said, Mommy, this is exactly what I want. This is exactly what we asked for. And I sat back because... If I had not come into agreement with what she wanted to offer, it would have disappointed the promise that she made to her child. See, some of y'all right now are in a position that this one right here ain't even for you. And sometimes when it don't interest you, you don't put forth your best. You don't like to contribute. You don't like to support. But God says, I need you to celebrate somebody else's breakthrough. Because the contribution that you give to this will open up the door for somebody else. And me, as I sat back on my sofa and looked at how my daughters respond to this de- I mean, to this dollhouse, I began to thank God that even though my feet was hurting, even though my legs was hurting, that that was the last stop that we had to make. But it was the last stop and the most important stop. Not to me, because I could have gotten them to knock off bread. I, I could have gotten them to great value my dollhouse. And I would have been just fine, but it wasn't what they asked for. And when you have labor and you work and you put in everything 
that you were supposed to put in. You did what you was asked to do. You did what you were required to do. When you begin to open up that gift, it's not another cheap copy that God will give you. It's not a knockoff brand. It's not a great value brand. But God says, I'm going to give you, watch this, I'm not just going to give you what you asked for, but I'm going to give you me. Yes. I looked at the house. And they began to decorate the house and try to put the house together and play with their toys. And it wasn't just a house for them, but it was a representation of the house that they lived in. Uh -oh. Now I could have been done with that. I was I was fine and dandy. I was I was a okay and I was ready to shut down shop and, and, and come on to church and, and give God the praise. But but the funny thing happened was this was this was a change in events that took place today. My wife said it best. It was like a shifting that took place because we are always giving. And we're always producing. And we're always giving. And we're always producing. And we're always contributing. And I mean, my wife always, for the last 16 plus years, have said we will take care of each other after Christmas. We won't have to worry about Christmas or do stuff for ourselves. Let's just make sure the kids are straight. Let's just make sure our sons are straight. Let's just make sure our daughters are straight. But see, when you do so much for other people, it's not that God does not care keep a mental note. God has a mental note of every time that you cried yourself to sleep, that you did it, and that nobody thank you, that you contributed, and it seemed like you came up short, that you was all in, and it seemed like you lost it all. I sat there on the couch, and then my child walked up to me, and they said, Daddy, this is for all of us. I, I could have sat there and said, well, wait a minute, no, 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 y'all go ahead and take this for yourself. They said, no, 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 daddy. We have all chipped in. I mean, every last one of us, all six of that name was on the tag. I mean, just in little manuscript. I don't know how the children write all crooked and stuff like that. All of that crooked little names was on the thing. And as I looked at it, it didn't even make a difference what was on the inside. It was a fact that all that I contributed, all the seeds that I had sown, all the many years that we had labored, all the times that me and her promised that we was going to do it, but held it off to a later day. They had enough belief and trust and love and compassion that said, we always get We're always receiving. This one right here is on behalf of the children. This one right here is on behalf of your sons and your daughters. This one right here, after all that you've done and all that you contribute, this is our way to say thank you. I will show this might be crazy, yes. I wish that you would take about three seconds and write your name on the present tag of this gift we're about to yeah. offer to our Father. Woo! I don't know about you today, but there's been desperate need for me to rip the run to him. Oh my God, the many things that he's done to me. And I wish, what can I render unto you? For your many benefits unto me. He's blessed you, he's kept you. I know it went hard.
the sound of my voice, I charge you this morning to give God your very best.